Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'la habata fillah Continue on and this will be the last sitting uh, as far as the advice of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al-Wasabi rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa and we reach the ninth point or the ninth piece of advice and he mentions that he mentions in his treaties and he says preserve your time and health and he mentions the hadith uh, he said Imam al-Bukhari collected in the Sahih on Ibn Abbas that he said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said two blessings are used impro uh, improperly by many of the people of health and free time so this shows us the importance of trying to preserve our those two valuable uh, valuable aspects uh, of our lives because all of us were more or less trying to in one form or another or the people who find value in their lives are striving to protect often either their health and their time you know many of the people are striving for this they're striving to to do that but in fact probably more correctly you'll find many people who waste both of those things they waste their health they don't take care of themselves physically and they don't use the time when they are healthy for righteousness for doing good deeds in fact you'll find the opposite it amazes me how many young people I mean a young you know they're in their 20s and things like this and then they don't they haven't uh, and they are from Saudi Arabia and they've never been to Mecca and things like this you know never made Umrah or what have you and this is a fairly serious uh, issue that you need to use your time in righteousness and use your wealth for righteousness and your health while you're healthy to do ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it becomes difficult, before you can't stand for prayer any longer, before you need aids and assistance to go and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or even pray on your bed or even more in a more severe situation. So those two things, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, are two things which are valuable that many of the people don't take advantage of and don't take advantage and waste it because they should be using it for khair, for ta'atillah, for obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Sheikh said, save your time and your health to do ibadah. So this is very important for the talib al-ilm because the talib al-ilm should realize that their time is limited. Their time is limited that they're going to have the blessing to even seek knowledge because your life will change once you get married. You have children, you have this, you have responsibilities, uh, family, all kind of things you have. External family, whatever the things that distract you and take you away from seeking knowledge. So using your youth and your health and your time while you have it, those things become invaluable. How many of us strive for our time? That is one of the least... Uh, of the things that I desire that I don't have, if that makes sense. Meaning, I desire to have time, but it is one of those things I'm so restricted because of my job. Look how much a job that takes you away from seeking knowledge, that takes you away from the things that you love, and in fact can sometimes be the opposite, sometimes it can destroy it, that that can be a hindrance to your seeking knowledge and a hindrance to you doing dawah, and a hindrance to doing what you want to do of good. Because you spend so much time going to work and spending time maybe in a job that has no value, maybe a job that wastes your time, maybe it's a sinful job, whatever the situation that a person may find themselves on, and you have to spend time preparing for that job. You have to go to bed early, you have to wake up early, you spend time commuting, all of this, you know, you can end up spending 14 hours a day just occupied with that job and then you have very little time to eat and then maybe you have a family and then you may have another activity and what you know and the day is gone and that's time and time and time again you know it's it's continuous so this is something which de 
de de it, it uh, detracts from your Talib al so that's why while you have time, use it wisely. And those are blessings. And as the Messenger وسلم, said, two blessings are used improperly by many of the people, our health will free time. So use it as much as possible. The Shaykh then said the next piece of advice, he said, giving importance to the Arabic language. He said, learn as much Arabic language that will suffice you in speaking properly and pronunciation and what you need to know to construct proper textual meanings. So that's probably the most important part of this advice that he mentioned, to know enough to construct proper textual meanings. Because it may not be necessary and for a person to have strong, uh, a lot of strength in speaking necessarily if they are uh, a non-Arab and their communities are non-Arabic. For example, someone who's Indonesian or Ethiopian or Somali and or uh, from America or from uh, the UK or from France or Germany, they may not have the need, the same kind of need to be able to speak fluently in Arabic. But what they do need is to understand Arabic to be able to go to the text. And if they need to, to communicate to those scholars that speak the language of Arabic, to be able to communicate with them and ask questions if need be, and to be able to translate or whatever the case may be. So there's a certain amount of, of Arabic that they need, but they don't need to be totally fluent in, in, fluid in uh, speaking Arabic. That's not necessarily uh, everyone's uh, goal, but our main goal, if you are seeking knowledge, is to have the tools to be able to go and benefit from the books and to benefit from the scholars. So that's, that's very important. Uh, and the next piece of advice he mentioned is journey to seek knowledge. He said, this has a significant origin. As the Prophet alayhi salatu he says the Prophet of Allah, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, traveled for one issue of knowledge, which was not required. And being a foreigner will help you free up time to gain knowledge. So here he's talking about the rahla as has been the sunnah of the ulama uh, in Islam to uh, seek knowledge. That, that, that the people before us, they strove. They strove to gain knowledge of hadith. They strove to gain knowledge of the various sciences in Islam. They strove and they traveled. And so... This is a ni'mah if someone is able to do that. If you are able, if Allah favors you with that, with regards to your health and your wealth and the means, then this is a great ni'mah min ni'amillah. But now, there are so many means. Now you can, even through, uh, through the internet, you can sit in your room eating pizza and study Islam now. So this is uh, a ni'mah min ni'amillah. However, I will say, as the Sheikh mentions, this journey to seek knowledge, there's nothing that replaces that. That even when you're sitting in your living room, and even you're sitting and you're listening to lectures and stuff, that is a great na'ma. But it's not the same, and it's not the same reward as sitting under the beards of the ulama, and traveling and striving with your wealth and your property and your life to go learn more about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to come closer to him. So uh, this is uh, a great na'ma if you are able to do so and if you're able to make the sacrifice and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors you with that. Another piece of advice he gave, he said, and this is the 12th piece of advice, he said, avoid taqlid or blind following. He said, Allah, he mentions the ayat where Allah wa ta'ala says, you can have kareem and follow not that which you have no knowledge about. So, here he's showing us the importance that for the Talib al Ilm that they need to seek Islamic knowledge and sound Islamic knowledge and they need to know uh, you know the evidences for what they're talking about that it shouldn't all it shouldn't be about just blind following that you have to be careful and cautious of that because there are many dangers of taqlid and again this is not the time nor place to talk about the intricacies of taqlid and when and when and if it's permissible and so on and so forth However, it's just important for us to know that we should not have blind partisanship and blind follow. I shouldn't say Sheikh so and so said for every issue, and that he's ne he's always correct 100%, and I follow him in every single ruling. 
you know, and, and, and I don't know any evidence for anything. This is a, it can be very dangerous because a person can be led astray. So it's very important to have uh, Islamic knowledge. And this is the whole, this goes back to uh, a part of that seeking knowledge and this advice for the Talib al -Im. And as Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Dawhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned in his book, uh, al Thalatha, he says, اعلم رحمك الله أنه يجب علينا تعلم أربع مسائل الأولى العلم وهو معرفة الله ومعرفة النبي ومعرفة الدين الإسلامي بأدلة. So he said, uh, know and may Allah subhanahu wa taala guide you or have mercy upon you. He said, verily, it's a, uh, an obligation on every Muslim to know four things. He said, the first thing is knowledge, and then he described what knowledge is. He says, it is knowing Allah. It is knowing his Prophet وسلم, and it is knowing the religion of Islam with his textual proof. So there, in uh, Imam Muhammad ibn al-Duhab ta'ala in his statement, we see the importance, he's emphasizing the importance of taking textual knowledge and, and of course knowledge from the ulama, but understanding the proofs with regards to your religion. Mithalin, for example, uh, if we say that you cannot pray without wudu. Well, it's important for you to know, at least in a general way, even if you haven't memorized the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, or you haven't memorized the ayat made from the book of from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to at least in general to be able to say, well, there's a hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, which means that and, and there is a hadith where the Messenger وسلم, said, La yaqbalullah salata ahadikum bi hatta uh, one of you uh, your prayer is not the person's prayer is not accepted or one of you your prayer is not accepted uh, if you have a hadith meaning you you break your wudu you uh, it could be hadith al-akbar or hadith al-asgar the minor or the major hadith but here he's talking specifically uh, you know as he mentions about wudu he's talking about the minor hadith you know the 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 minor impurities passing gas urinating defecating that these things they break your wudu and until you make wudu Allah will not accept your prayer so letting us know this is delil that means this is evidence and you know that evidence that you have to have wudu for you have to have tahara in order to pray so you now know the evidence it isn't simply just you saying you you know this in general from Islam but you have no idea where it comes from you just heard it from your sheikh and you just said what your sheikh, well my sheikh said you should make wudu. Another person's sheikh says, maybe he's an extreme Sufi, he says, no, you don't need wudu, you just need to have khushur, you just need to have serious concentration and humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and once you balagh yaqeen, once you get to a level of yaqeen and certainty, then you don't need to do any ibadah. Okay, so people, there are people who make taqlid of this, I'm not just making this up, these are real issues, real masail, which are unfortunate, have plagued the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of people making taqlid to that level, to the level of kufr and shirk and zandaka and accepting that and being led astray and being led to kufr, shirk and zandaka. وَعِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ وَكُفْرْ وَشِرْكْ وَنِفَاقَ أَمِينِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Then he mentions the 13th uh, piece of advice. He said, avoid controversy or argumentation. This is so important that we almost need to <coughs> speak about it separately, but we want to kind of finish this treatise. He said it was collected in a Tirmidhi in his Jami'i uh, <coughs> on Abu uh, Umama al-Bahali radiallahu ta'ala who said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a people did not become misguided for the, from the guidance they were upon except after they were given to debate, meaning religious controversy. Then he, he read, they do not set it forth to you, save by way of disputation. Nay, they are contentious people. And then he said, and, uh, the sheikh said, and do not be obstinate regarding your opinion during differences in understanding, nor in differences in degree of interpretation, so that people become blind followers of you, whether you are aware or not. So this is, that's an important piece of tarbiyah. We need to stop just for at least at least a second and point out a few point, important points. First, he's talking about this his beautiful advice of avoiding controversy and argumentation. If you look to see the people who are busying you with uh, making uh, declaring everyone to be an innovator, even other people from Ahl Sunnah, or making takfir of people, 
subhanAllah, someone just left a, a, a comment on my YouTube page saying that, you know, basically saying I'm, I'm ignorant and saying that uh, the only I, I don't have any problem with them claiming I'm ignorant, but what I have a problem is showed how jahil this person was and his claim is how ignorant he was because he said, you don't speak about important matters, uh, you know, you are, I forgot what he said, something, but you don't speak about important matters. So I replied to him, I said, yeah, I'm afraid that your comment has some issues with it because why? You are first, I have many durus that we've been speaking about Tawheed for years. Tawheed is the most important thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you can have it. I've not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Allah did not say that he created mankind in jinn for the purpose of making rulings on one another. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala did not say, I made, I created mankind in jinn for the purpose of making tikfir to one another. So this person, because they're a defender of Faisal, Jamaiki, and the comment was related to Faisal, Jamaiki, they were just upset because they didn't like the hujja or bayan, they didn't like the tawdir, they didn't like the clarity, they didn't like the proof, they didn't like the evidence showing that his guy is a mubtadi'a, a person of desires, a person of hawa, a person of takfir, a person of, uh, of of a great evil, a person who fits the the the, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam, in which he said al khawarij kilab al nar, al khawarij kilab al nar. The khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire. That they didn't like that, so they wanted to argue on battle, and this is the way of the people of desires in the past. All those groups, they made takfir ba'dhub bin ba'd. They made takfir of one another. The Khawarij sects, they broke into various groups and they made takfir of one another. And the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiya and the Asha'ira, they all disagreed with one another. Some were had Tishbi and some fled from Tishbi to where they been, became Mu'attala, to where they negated the resemblance to such a degree that they began to negate the Nasus. So it shows how bid'a led to bid'a. Instead of dealing with bid'a by negating it, or refuting it with the sunnah, they refuted bid'a with bid'a. And so here we have a situation where we have many people who argue and defend falsehood and they reject evidence. And this is a very shameful trait. And this is a trait of ahl bid'a. So we have to be cautious of habitifillah and we have to busy ourselves with those things which are important. We have to busy those things that are going to bring us to Jannah, that's going to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's going to strengthen the Muslim Brotherhood, that's going to be uh, following the, the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that we have to cooperate in righteousness and piety and not cooperate in sinfulness and enmity and hatred. So look at this, Sahabat Allah. So look at this, Sahabat Allah. What are the important things? So many people, they don't even know what's important. Instead of talking about Tawheed, all they do is talk about Takfir. All they do is talk about major Messiah. These are major Messiah for the ulama. Or they be jahil. You know, the excuse of ignorance. How many people are still, they, they still want to talk about this stuff? Fine, you have a different view? Go. Go and keep your view. But still, talking about this. Why don't you talk about Tawheed? Why don't you talk about worshiping Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala? Why don't you talk about those things that are going to bring you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal? But instead you want to deal with controversy. Some people, subhanAllah, I know a real story. This happened to us when we first got to Yemen. Unfortunately, there was some controversy. And of course it was amongst the Americans mainly. And unfortunately, so the brothers, it was talking about a particular Messiah. And I'm not going to mention this issue. But everyone had a view. And none of us had really, you know, we're all more or less, everybody had different levels. But no one had really been immersed in study. You know, some of us were more dependent, like myself, on translations at that time. Some of us had a little bit of Arabic, some of us had more Arabic. But everyone had a view. If such and such happens, we can, you know, this, can, this is what we should do. This is this, this and this and this. So there's like four, you know, all these brothers with different views. And I more or less just sat back and just said, this isn't, it just doesn't sound right. It doesn't go with my fitra, but I, I can't dispute about it with ilm. SubhanAllah, then they finally took it to the Shaykh. So you you then you see how people waste time instead of seeking knowledge on major Messiah. I'm talking big major Messiah that are for you know major students of knowledge and for the ulama and, 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 and the, 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 the major scholars dealing with the major Messiah and the people want to 
involve themselves and they're just beginning students of knowledge. And then with that, they get distracted and they distort the truth and they could go to desires and bid on themselves. And likewise, this is very important, this is beautiful advice the Sheikh is giving for the student of knowledge. Because why? The student of knowledge obviously is going to be trying to raise their family and they're obviously uh, more than likely they are the ones going to go back to their communities and try to give dawah, try to call the people to khair. So they don't want to call the people. So now that I'm back, let's talk about the conditions of tikfir. This is the first thing. You don't know anything about la ilaha illallah, but let's talk about tikfir. We need to know this. Let's talk about the governments around the world. Let's talk about uh, protesting. Let's talk about this and that and that and the, all these other major messiah. And they don't even talk about the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they can be a source of misguidance for the people. So it's very dangerous, ahabit billah, and it's very beautiful advice. Avoid controversy argumentation. And likewise, I want to mention this for the students of knowledge that are on the path of knowledge, that are in Egypt, that are in Morocco, that are in uh, Mauritania, that are in uh, Saudi, that are in uh, wherever, Indonesia, wherever they're seeking knowledge, don't waste time. And don't waste time in controversy. Don't spend your time. We could tell, tell you some crazy stories about some of the things that went on in Medina, uh, especially amongst Western students, subhanAllah. And you just want to involve yourself in that which will benefit you. Uh, likewise, the Sheikh mentioned with that point, he said, and do not be obstinate regarding your opinion. So those issues in which there is difference of opinion, meaning there's ikhtilaf to no one. You know, there's a difference of opinion uh, in opinion that are gradations. You know, that they're not differences that contradict one another, especially in Messiah of fiqh We're talking about issues of furur, you know, issues of uh, fiqh, things like this, about different, for example, some move their finger into shahud and some don't. Some, you know, put their hands on their chest like this and praying and some you know, uh, or, you know, maybe below that or on their belly button or whatever the case may be, or below their belly button, you know, you want to operate by Dalil and what you think is the strongest view or from your, your scholars that you take and in, a, in accordance with the strongest evidence. However, making hajr and cutting one another off and destroying one another's uh, integrity and attacking one another and making to of one another and uh, boycotting and other issues for those issues that is not permissible and that's what the ulama teach us and that's what the ulama qadim and, and that's the example we see in the Salaf al-Salih and so Habitifillah he mentions the last point of his treatise he said firmness regarding fatwa he said Allah the glorified and almighty said and for what your tongues describe do not utter the lie saying this is lawful and that is unlawful in order to forge a lie against the law. Surely those who forge the lie against the law shall not prosper. He says, this is what I advise and it is not sufficient to hurry in advising the student of knowledge. Therefore, I advise him to return to Al-Jami Al-Bayan Al-Ilm wal fadlihi by Ibn Abdul Bar and the book Al-Ilm by Ibn uh, Khaythama uh, Zuhair Ibn, uh, Ibn Harb and Al-Ilm from Sahih Al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, and the other books which have been compiled in Islam. May Allah grant success to all in attaining that which he is pleased with and loves. So the Shaykh ended his beautiful advice for the student of knowledge in a very beautiful way. And those are things that we can take, hopefully to heart and practice and implement. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala forgive us of our many, many shortcomings, our many mistakes, in knowledge, our many deficiencies in knowledge and conveying knowledge and in practicing knowledge. And may Allah Taala just better make us better believers in Him and better students of knowledge to traverse the path of knowledge. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala grant us ilm and nafia wa rizq al wa amal al mutaqabbilin. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala bless us with jannah al and forgive us of our many sins and shortcomings. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala bless us with the heart to go forward in seeking knowledge and conveying knowledge and protect us from the evil of the shayateen from amongst mankind and jinn. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself with the shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.